Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. <laughs> Twenty-four years ago, the Booker Knight was relaxing, watching television, and all of a sudden, the regularly scheduled programming was interrupted by a news bulletin. It showed pictures of people climbing the Berlin Wall with hammers and banging on that wall. I was shocked. That wall had been erected whenever I was three and a half years old in August of 1961. I saw it much later on when I was 27, touring Germany. And now, five years later, the wall was coming down. In my mind, it was permanent. It was fixed. It was going to be there forever. That wall that divided East Germany from West Germany. And yet, just like that, in an instant, people were starting to tear down the wall. It was a great day in the world. Families that had been denied and divided for decades were reunited. Friends were rekindled. Friendships were rekindled that had been distant for years. There were some powerful stories that came out of that event. One story that was really interesting, at least it caught my attention, was about a man in Berlin who went to the library in August of 1961 to check out a book. The very next day, the wall was erected. Now, the library was on one side of the wall, and the man with the book was on the other side of the wall. He fell onto that. For all those years. When the wall came down, the man took the book back to the library. Graciously, the library waived all the late fees, which would amount to a couple of thousand dollars. You can only imagine. But that is being hopeful. And that is being persistent. And this is what Jesus lifts up in the gospel lesson. For today. Story about a woman. A woman, now she's a widow, which means that she has very little political power. Probably has very few economic needs. She goes to this judge who is indifferent to her plight. And she keeps asking that the judge would grant her justice against her opponent. And the judge, after a while, just simply gives in. She wears them out. Because of her persistence, the judge granted her wish. Now, it's important that we understand in this parable the woman is named character. And she just rightly displays what it means to be a prayerful disciple, to be constant in prayer, asking for God's will to be done in your life. To open up yourself to the presence of God. The judge cannot be compared to God. He doesn't represent God. This is one of those cases where Jesus is saying, your commitment to prayer and the life of prayer should be like this woman at this level. But if an evil judge can be worn out, how much more quickly will your loving Heavenly Father give you those good things that you desire. So it's not like the parable of the prodigal son, where each character in that parable, the father, of course, is representative of God, the son who wonders is representative of, of wayward sinners, and then the elder son is a smug self righteous who begrudgingly stays on the farm. It's not one of that, but this is what they call amplification. If an evil judge can be worn out, how much more quickly will you give, will your Father in heaven give you those things that you ask? So it's important for us to keep that in mind. God loves us, and God is concerned about us. He is not indifferent. Your plight. Luther reminds us, says in the small catechism, 
when it comes to the petition, the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Now I want you all to do something. I want you all to look at the, your red hymnals, the ELW. And turn to the back of the red hymnal. Page 1,163. Page 1,163. Now I'm doing this for two reasons. First of all, to have you read the petition for yourself. But also, secondly, to let you know that the small catechism, which is a gem of our tradition, is found in the New Testament. Oftentimes we ignore the small catechism because we think it's only written for 7th and 8th grade. It's not. It's written for all Christians. Luther says here in the fourth petition, In fact, God gives us daily bread without our prayer, even to all evil people. But we ask in this prayer that God causes us to recognize what our daily bread is and to receive it with thanksgiving. Part of prayer is not just simply asking. There's a part of prayer that is also recognizing. Recognizing the good things that God has given you. Teaching yourselves to be grateful, to be thankful. That's easy for us as people who live pretty comfortably to, on good days, acknowledge this. But what about those people who live on the margins, who are constantly struggling for justice? What about the people who are dealing with issues that do not seem to go away? And what about those who live in countries with rulers that they would gladly trade in for an indifferent judge? Every day we hear stories about oppression, hunger, violence, justice. And there are dark places in our personal lives, too, where people are praying for employment opportunities, broken relationships, health concerns, youth who are acting out in ways that are destructive to others and to themselves. Normal anxieties of daily living, I think they're very best described in that wrestling match that we see between Jacob, their theory, thanks to the Jabba Brook. As he wrestles all night, all night with this angel of the Lord. That's a great image for prayer too, wrestling. Now, I can imagine wrestling all night with someone. I did a little wrestling when I was younger, and they used to say, and I think rightly so, wrestling is the toughest three minutes of sports. I can't imagine wrestling with someone all night, but that's a great image for prayer. And one black pastor during the civil rights once said, until you stood years knocking at the door, at a locked room, your knuckles bleeding, you really, you do not really know what prayer is. It's important to remember when we struggle, God, that we don't struggle alone, that God struggles with us. Jacob stood up, stayed up all night wrestling. Jesus, too, stood up, stayed up all night praying. Praying before his death that this cup would be taken away from him. It said, not what I want for you, but rather what you want. It's important to remember when we struggle, we do not struggle alone. That God is not indifferent. Even though it seems like his timetable doesn't match our timetable. Jesus gives us a directive as disciples, but also gives us a wonderful example of how he put his radical trust in the goodness of God. 